And now, as always, I have to go in to start. I have to start all my streams by titling the streams. Isn't that silly? When I use the Streamlabs app. What are we going to call this? Let's take a look at the uh, Scooby, the Scooby-Doo, it actually autofills that, the Scooby-Doo where are, hold on, where are you with an exclamation, uh, what is this? Let's take a look at the Scooby-Doo. Where are you? Uh, haunted house box. Ooh, not Bill X. Box set. I don't like typing in a landscape. Okay. Done. Save. Let's take a look at it. <clears throat> there it is. Let's take a look at it. That's all we're going to do. What if that was all that I did? Let's take a look at it. And then I just sit here like this the whole time. Let's also take a look at my new slippers that I bought. Oops. Oh, shit. That was already there. I didn't do that just now. It was like that when I bought it at the local Best Buy restaurant. Check out these new slippers that I picked up. Not too bad, huh? Pretty decent. A nice pair of slippers to uh, wear around the house. I got these at Walmart for $7.99, I think. In case you want a pair for yourself, you could probably find them at your local Walmart for uh, just about that much. No, I don't want to. I don't want to send a message. Now that won't go away. How do I get that off of there? Oh, come on. Jesus. Wait a minute. Now I've done it. Uh, what, what, there we go. Okay. No, I don't want to send a message. That's fine. Hopefully the uh, sound didn't cut out again there like it did the other night. In, in my stream from the other evening, the sound cut out, and I don't know why it did, but, uh, you know, what are you going to do? It, it cut out, and that was that, and, uh, you know, the majority of the stream, a good chunk of it there in the middle was just ruined. I didn't get any steam or anything out of that. I wonder if it might have been a faulty, uh, what would you say, like a, a faulty uh, seal. Smells fine. It smells like beer. Hey, I just noticed there's like a little shape on my table here that looks like the Death Star. Look at this. You see that? It's kind of like the Death Star over there. I wonder if they did that on purpose. Maybe I got the special edition uh, uncredited Star Wars Ikea crossover table that they didn't tell anyone about. Well, I can't travel very far with my phone right now because it's being charged at the moment. <clears throat> right there, as you can see, uh, it's plugged into the wall. 
Now, if you're going to criticize this area right here, uh, the reason why it's a little shoddy looking is because the original crew who came in and, uh, and put this wall up that you see right here, they, they cut all of the receptacle uh, holes way too big. These are jumbo size receptacle plates. The biggest ones they make that you can buy at like Home Depot and such. They cut the holes way too big. We had to kind of patch them. And, um, and I need to go back and touch those up a little bit. Okay? So that's why this paint right here. I mean, this is my fault. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Okay, in case you were wondering. So, here's a set, a Scooby-Doo Where Are You Complete Series Haunted House box set, and I saw this at Best Buy several weeks ago. And it was one of those things where you ever pick up something that you're looking at, and it's like, you know what, I'd really like this, but I don't know. I don't know if I want to buy it today. So what you do is you put it back on the shelf. You set it back up there. And then you're like, you know what? If it's here the next time, then I'll, I'll go ahead and buy it. And that's what I did with this. And I've actually been thinking about it all week. I've been thinking, when am I going to get a chance to go out to Best Buy again and see if they've got that Scooby-Doo set? And I went out tonight made a few stops and picked up a few things. This is one of the things that I picked up. And uh, I was really happy it was still there because I think it's a really neat set. I saw on Amazon that they've got some other Scooby-Doo Complete Series box sets, but I did not see this very same one. Um, I don't know if this is like a Best Buy exclusive or maybe they do have this listed on Amazon. It's just got like a different uh, thumbnail and they don't show you this particular uh, configuration. That could be. But you know, I've always been a big fan of Scooby-Doo. <clears throat> it was one of those uh, cartoons that I just loved watching when I was a kid. And I have fond memories of watching Scooby-Doo Where Are You? This one in particular. This series, the OG Scooby-Doo series, N not the newfangled ones. I never liked all the crossovers they did with uh, superheroes or Harlem Globetrotters or any of that stuff. I, I was always turned off by that because I loved the formula of the original series so much. I loved just the simplistic approach that every episode had. You know what you're getting. You know the monster is always going to be a person in disguise, but that was the fun of the series, is seeing who it was going to be. Could you guess it right by the end? And, um, and that's part of the fun. You know what I mean? And the monsters, too. Of course. The monsters, the settings, the creepy uh, atmosphere. It was a lot of fun. It was like that... Uh, it's the same kind of experience you get when you go to a haunted house. It's kind of a safe, spooky experience where you know nothing too, too bad is going to happen. Uh, it's not going to get too awful for anyone involved. But there might be a few little spooky scares scattered throughout. And that's the fun of Scooby-Doo. So I picked it up, and, uh, and it's one of those shows that I feel like it's great to just put on in the background. It's great for background noise. What I remember most about Scooby-Doo, when I would watch it most often, would be late at night. Uh, they put it on a cartoon network late at night. And sometimes on special occasions... Um, I don't even know if it would be special occasions. On weekends, I guess, if I was at home and I wasn't staying at a friend's house or over my grandparents or something, I would like to fall asleep on the couch in our living room 
And oftentimes, uh, Scooby-Doo is what I would fall asleep watching because they had this show on Cartoon Network. Uh, it was like there, there'd be like a block of Scooby-Doo on late at night. And that's always what I think about. Uh, fond memories of that. So it's always had kind of a special place for me. And now I've got the entire series on Blu-ray. And you know, for a while, I was trying to kind of pare down my, uh, my Blu-ray collection and my DVDs. But what I've done is I've really focused on building up a nice collection of, uh, of, of shows and movie series that I like. Because it seems like every day there's a new streaming service that's popping up. And all of these things that maybe at one point you would have been able to find on Netflix, now you have to subscribe to all these various streaming services. Soon, once like every, uh, you know, every production company gets its own streaming service, it's going to be cheaper to just buy cable again. Now, I do have cable, you know. Should I turn this around as I speak to you? I do have cable. <clears throat> okay. Um, I cut the cord a while back, and then we ended up getting cable again with like a bundle deal where it was like we moved into this house and we wanted internet. And they're like, well, it's going to be cheaper if you just bundle uh, a home phone and cable package together. And it's like, all right, well, sure, we'll do that. And also, I got to watch my wrestling every week, and you know, uh, so it's good to have for that. So, anyhow, I think it's a good idea to pick up TV series um, that you like, stuff that you might be able to stream on Netflix or Hulu, because one day it'll either disappear or it's going to get picked up by another service, and you're going to have to sub to that. So it's a good idea to start grabbing stuff like this, I think, because I think the price is going to go up as the years go on. They're probably going to really trim down the number of, uh, if not the number of releases that they do, probably trimming down the number of copies that are released of each TV series or movie, so on and so forth. Because they want you to stream this stuff. Uh, if they can, if they can uh, keep stuff like this out of the hands of consumers, they're going to know the only way for people to watch these shows that they love is to pay a monthly fee. If they want to always have the ability to watch their favorite shows, they're going to always have to subscribe to whichever platform that show is on. So if you want to beat the system, start investing in your own personal collection again. Um, that's what I think is a good idea at this point. So let me now go ahead and open this up. Why don't I, in just a sec, uh, I have to do this with one hand because I still haven't brought my tripod up here. I think I can unplug the phone for just a bit. Let me move that out of the way. I'll take a look at it on this table here. Let's see what we've got. Um, I'm going to have to get a little slicey tool, aren't I? Let's walk over here real quick. Got some tools here. Some stuff I've been using to get this place put together. I'm hoping my desk for that corner arrives tomorrow. That would be really nice. At the very least, early this week. Okay, let's have a little slice here. Okay, I'm going to come down that way with precision. There we go. Hopefully I can do this without damaging anything. There we are. It seems to open up fairly well. All right, now what I'm going to do is turn it over and I'm going to let Isaac Newton do the work. There we go. And uh, you see that this little cardboard 
sleeve insert, if you will, is uh, left on the inside. Gives you your backdrop, your spooky backdrop with the bats and the full moon and everything. I'm going to set this over here for now. It's not really a feature item. Though it is a nice case for containing the, uh, the set. Let me just put this down for a quick second here. Just wanted to, uh, I always like to snap the uh, knife, the blade back in place. You don't want to leave it open and forget that you did so and then put your hand down and uh, slice yourself up. That's not good. So practice safety first when you're dealing with blades. It's a good idea to do. So here is the haunted house. As you can see, there's a miniature Funko Pop uh, Scooby-Doo figurine inside this window. And we'll get him out in just a second. Even though I'm not a big Funko Pop fan, it's nice of them to include a little toy for you, a little extra. On the back here, uh, you've got a, a grave, a fresh a freshly dug grave perhaps some spooky eyes looking out from uh, from this hole in the back patio a black cat spelling doom inside uh, Daphne is pointing up at something and, and there's a monster reaching out to grab her it looks like Scooby's coming out the back here there's Fred no wait how's Daphne up here too maybe this is a uh, uh, a decoy. Maybe it's a decoy Daphne down here. They're tricking you into thinking that she's inside so you'd come and save her, but actually she's up here with Fred trying to escape the home. And then over here Shaggy and, uh, and Velma and a creepy ghost. And that's what we've got here in the back. This is what's going on uh, behind the house. If they want to get out, all they have to do is just jump out the windows and they'll be fine. I think that's I think they'll survive the fall. That's not very that's not very far down. They'll be fine, especially on this fresh earth down here. You see it's nice and fresh. Uh over here, you've got uh Scooby being crept up on some decrepit windows. Over here, Shaggy is being chased by uh this monster. I know what he looks like. I know which one this is, but I can't think of the name right now. And all this stuff has nice, it's nice and textured. You can see it right there a little bit. You see how all the characters are raised just a bit. You can see the light bouncing off of them just nice. That's pretty cool. I like that feature. It's not just a flat cardboard surface. This is raised in texture. And, uh, and the raised parts are actually kind of glossy. They're raised and a little bit glossier than everything else. So uh, pretty high quality. Same with Scooby on the front here. Some of these boards. And then, uh, you know, here are cast on the front in the picture frames and such. Okay. It looks like the top pops. Oh. I was expecting it to maybe be connected back here, but it's not. So it doesn't really, it doesn't pop off. It doesn't flip back so much as it just lifts off like this. So if you get one of these for yourself, you'll know not to make the same mistake that I just did. Don't think that you just flip it back and it's going to stay on. It's not going to. It's not connected. You see what I mean? Okay. There's the inside, nothing really going on there, but you can set this off to the side as you explore the rest. First, what is this? Maybe this just stays in. That might be kind of deep. That doesn't feel like it wants to come out. I think that's, that's in there for a purpose. Maybe it's, well, now it's coming out, you see, maybe it was just stuck in there next to uh, this guy. So here's our pocket pop keychain of Scooby. It is a vinyl figure keychain. 
He looks to have uh, some sort of sandwich. This is possibly... I don't know what kind of sandwich that is. Maybe uh, this would be a good question to ask the rookie critic because he is a sandwich artist. So he might be able to properly identify uh, what kind of sandwich Scooby is holding here. We've got the 50-year celebration on the package. They're saying don't give this to babies under the age of three. They might try to eat it. I will probably just go ahead and leave that in the box, I think. I think that, that's probably what I'll do. Okay, so now this does come out. That's just uh, some extra packing. Now here we go. Here is kind of the meat and potatoes that we've been looking forward to. That's everything inside. What is this? There's like a little... Hmm. Something's been uh, kind of ripped on the inside here. It's, it's part of this, part of this box that the foam was sitting on top of. There's a, a rip on the inside. I didn't do that. It shipped like that, slightly defective, very slightly. Now here's something I just noticed. The backgrounds on these pictures are, uh, they're like uh, super high gloss metallic shiny kind of deal and they they uh, kind of change color in the light that's neat so here's our digital copy someone probably already saw this and if you did congratulations I never ever ever redeem these things so uh, here you go congrats Leave the disc at home. Take your episodes wherever you go. Here it is. There's the redemption code. You might be like, oh, you played yourself. No, I, um, I can't tell you how many of these things I have or that I've collected over the years that I've never done anything with. I thought about it at one point. Maybe I might have made uh, an account on one of these services at one time or another. Maybe the Disney one, because I had a bunch of Disney codes um, from movies that I had purchased. I just, I've never used them. I don't really care about this. So, um, again, congratulations. Someone out there, if you redeem this code, you will be able to watch the complete Scooby-Doo Where Are You series. So, uh, have fun with that. If you do, if you do go ahead and download this, if you get your copy, um, let me know. Shout out down in the comments or holler at me on Twitter. I would like to know that someone was able to use this because I was not going to. Um, all right, here's our Scooby-Doo Encyclopedia by Benjamin Bird, illustrated by Tim Levins. Tim Levins seems to have a grasp on how these characters should look when you're dealing with the classic series. On the back, what is this? Um, oh, what is it? Buy the full book and discover more than 200 villains and guest stars. Available now. 128 pages, 8 by 11 size, only from Capstone. So this is just like a miniature teaser. This is kind of like a Scooby-Doo encyclopedia ash can in a way. And they're going to try to get you to purchase the full book. Now here you go. I flipped right open to something I was talking about earlier. It's something I didn't really like, you know. And maybe it would be more fun to go back and watch as an adult. I just, uh, you know, knowing it's going to be campy and goofy. I just like the mystery feel and always having that, that creepy factor um, when it was just the original cast. You bring Batman into the mix, you bring some other people, it doesn't have that same quality to it anymore. What else have we got? Let's flip through this real quick. You get an introduction. Uh, what is this? It looks like 
sort of your bio pages. I'm guessing there's going to be one of these for each cast member. Nice to look at. Nice paper stock. They've got some good information in here, it looks like. So it'd be fun to read. Look, this uh, matches my wall. Actually, the colors in this book kind of match the stuff I've got going on in here. Look at this. It's not perfect, but the border on this page kind of matches the uh, file cabinet over there, doesn't it? Mystery machine. Uh, what's, what's this? Oh, they show you inside the mystery machine. Kind of show you all the equipment that the gang has. Reminds me of those Star Wars books. I've got a few of those where they show you like the inside of uh, various fighters and spaceships and whatnot. Uh, what is this? Dino Mutt and Blue Falcon. I can't tell you that I've ever watched any episodes featuring these guys. Have you? If you have, let me know. The Speed Buggy. Yeah, this is the style of Scooby-Doo stuff I just did not get into. But perhaps I would appreciate it more now. I do like Vincent Price. But, again, Vincent Price was a very creepy man. Very mysterious. So he kind of fits in with all of those uh, characters. There's Batman and Robin. That's what I opened up to first. Scooby and Shaggy's Top Ten Eats. Of course, number one would be Scooby Snacks. Uh, let's run through real quick. Number 10, World's Biggest Burrito. Number 9, Cotton Candy. Number 8, the Super Shaggy Sandwich. 7, the Shaggy Super Sandwich. 8 was the Super Shaggy, and 7 is the Shaggy Super. What's the difference here? Open the mouth between the gums, look out stomach. Here comes a double, triple decker sardine and marshmallow fudge sandwich. What is the Shaggy Super? That is, not to be confused with the Super Shaggy Sandwich, number eight, this great eat was born of necessity, stuffed with ingredients only found in a haunted mansion, including fish food. Now, why would this be higher on the list than the Super Shaggy? I'm sure if Shaggy had his choice, he would choose the uh, the one here, the mouth-watering one. We, you know, it's made of uh, sardines and marshmallow fudge. This one that's just put together with a bunch of ingredients that he found lying around a haunted house. I mean, I don't know. Number six, the liverwurst sandwich a la mode. Five, blockbuster pizza. Hmm. Four, the jaw stretcher special. Hmm. Sounds a little risque to me. Number three, hot dogs. Two, Shaggy Snacks. And number one, Scooby Snacks. All right. Vampires and Zombies. We've got a good breakdown of some of these uh, characters here. Oh, and they give you spoilers. So you get the monsters up here, and then down below they show you actually who uh, was dressed up. These guys over here look like actual monsters. They have no alias. These are the real guys. And I, I, again, I preferred the one where it was someone dressed up. I liked solving the mystery that way. Dracula, the Gypsy, the Wolfman, Frankenstein. No face zombie. Looks like a butt face zombie to me. Doesn't it? That doesn't look like a no face. Looks like a an ass face. Zombie Lila, zombie creeper. I'm gonna give myself spoilers before I watch through the series again. Cause it's been a long time since I've watched a bunch of these. You can make your own Scooby snacks. They've got a recipe here. I'm giving this away. Here you go. 
If anyone wants this, if you want to make your own Scooby Snacks, not only have I shown a code for the entire series, but I've given this away. The Make Your Own Scooby Snacks Recipe. Pause the video and then uh, write this down or screenshot it, whatever you want to do, and you can make your own Scooby Snacks. Congratulations. And on the last page, it's just uh, some random artwork, a thumbprint. Yeah. There you go. That's that. Now, last but not least, of course, this is why you purchased the damn thing, because this is, this is actually uh, where all the discs are. This is where the discs are kept. The um, the case here, of course, looking very similar to the uh, the front of uh, our box set. The back, I think, is actually the very same thing, right there. Just about they uh, kind of reused some assets, if you will. Put that. Okay, now let's open it on up. Here's the spine, Blu-ray, Scooby-Doo, where are you? Complete series, you got your Warner Bros down at the bottom there. Open it up, shows you your discs and uh, the title of each episode. And here are the actual discs themselves. A nice uh, representation of all the characters. Now I always like to do this. Um, uh oh. Nope. I'm gonna fix this real fast. Now uh, behind each one, you get another little piece of art. I've just smeared a finger smear on these. That's very easy to do. These types of discs pick up fingerprints very, very easily, and even more so because uh, I just used some hand lotion about an hour ago, and um, some of that residue uh, still remains, some of the oil from all this work up in this attic, my hands have gotten very, very cracked and dry over the course of the past month or so, and uh, I did not want to do any sort of unboxing video with dry, cracked hands where I'm getting close-ups and people are trying to look at you know the stuff that I'm talking about, but all they can do is stare at my nasty, uh, dried, uh, barren-looking hands like uh, deserts, like if you zoomed in it would look like the desert. I didn't want that to happen. So I used a, a bit of moisturizer so that your eyes would not be, uh, you know, distracted from stuff like this. So there you go. I've kind of flipped them, oriented them in a proper way so that they're looking at us when we go through. And there you go. And that's that. A nice, nice box set. I am very glad that this was still there. Quite happy that I was able to snag this because, uh, you know, it seems like the type of thing that someone would have picked up since I was at Best Buy last time. It had been about two weeks. I was really not expecting it to be there, but it was. So I win. I win this round. I picked up a few other things too. So maybe sometime soon I will show you something else that I purchased this evening. If I can get this back in. There we go. Nice and packed. And uh, I'll just set this back on top there. So I'm not going to watch any right now, I don't think. I don't think I'm going to watch any tonight. I'll probably go to sleep fairly soon. 
when I wrap up this stream, how am I doing this? I'm holding it between my knees. It's an old streamer trick. Is it old or did I just invent it? There we go. Don't have your tripod, just hold it between your knees and you can do stuff like this and you can present to your audience like I just did. There we are. How much did this cost? Was it, I don't remember. It wasn't very much. It was not as much as you might think. What would you think this kind of box set would, would you know, go for at a place like Best Buy in the year of our Lord 2020? Um, you know how I told you that there are probably going to be fewer and fewer sets like this available for people to purchase. Even though that's the case, I think, okay, I think, I think that's true. Um, let's assume it is for right now. A lot of places are clearing out their stock. I think that's why I was able to get this for so cheap. And if you go into a Best Buy or if you go into a Target or a Walmart, you'll notice they have a lot of old TV shows, even some newer ones, in box set form uh, for really, really affordable prices. Better than you'll get on Amazon in some cases. Now, I don't always go for what the Amazon price is because uh, there's like a convenience factor to it. I like finding things out in the wild. I like picking things up um, in person. There's like an adventure to it that I think is lost on a lot of people. I was just listening to your boy Zach talk about earlier today uh, on his one of his videos. I think, what was he talking about? Uh, he was talking about... He was kind of talking about the comics industry. What was the video about? It was it about the Dandy Dio stuff? I don't know. He was he was discussing how he used to have to go out and purchase all of his paper for drawing and stuff in person. And now he goes out and he doesn't like it. He doesn't like shopping in real life. I love shopping in real life. I love going Christmas shopping. I love the hustle and bustle. I like people being excited. I like picking stuff out in the store, finding it, holding it in my hands, actually getting to uh, have an experience, a connection with the purchases that I make. I'm a fan of that. I, I would be sad if uh, it ever went away completely. So I try to take advantage of it when I still can. So, I mean, again, this is one of those things that I wouldn't really have thought to look up and I wouldn't exactly call it an impulse buy because I sat on the purchase for a while. Like I said, I gave it some time, but it is an item that if I just saw it kind of scrolling through my feed on Twitter or, you know, wherever, I don't know. I don't know that I would buy it, but looking at a shelf, and seeing this in real life, you can you get a, a feel for the dimensions. You wonder, what does this feel like? What, what's it like when you actually take this haunted house out of the uh, plastic box? What's it made of? Is it heavy duty? Is it nicely constructed? These are the kinds of questions that you can get a better idea of. You're not sure, but you can get a better idea of when you're there in person, when you're holding it, you get to turn it around, you get to check it out and this is a limited edition what is this i just noticed this um how many did they make it's number forty eight thousand six hundred ninety two of fifty thousand so it's not like one of 100 or anything like that but it's still nice to know what number i have this is not going to be a million seller box set uh, in the big scheme of humanity, that's a pretty small number. So, okay. Well, that's that. Unfortunately, 
no one was able to uh, come in live tonight. I saw Obi-Wan say that uh, he has not been getting notifications for my live videos. So if you are watching this after the fact and you're subbed to the channel, please make sure that you have bonged the gong for notifications. Or if you did previously, make sure that YouTube has not unbonged your gong. Make sure that bell is still dinged so that you can get my live video notifications uh, when, whenever they feel like letting you know. If you haven't done so, please sub to the channel. Share this video with all your friends who love Scooby-Doo. Um, and again, let me know if you redeem the code. I would like to know who got it. I'd like to know that you're able to enjoy a little Scooby-Doo on the house just for uh, visiting and, and watching the channel for a bit. So that's going to do it for now. I hope you have a fantastic day, evening, whatever it is for you. And uh, Lord willing, I will see you soon. Good night. Good night.